Hello world, it's Mr. Resistor here again, continuing our Alpha Nubro experience. And let me start off with an apology, um, because I think I may have made an error while recording yesterday, um, in that I did not adjust my OBS settings to properly capture uh, my whole window on my fancy new monitor. So uh, hopefully that's not the case, but if it is, then um, sorry for putting up a crappy video. Um, hopefully I've got those fittings fixed now. Uh, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so, um, if you recall, <coughs> see, we had this job, we left this job running when we went to, when we logged off. Um, so we'll go ahead and get those. Um, Probably got enough ammo for now, but it never hurts to have more. Um, all right, so let's check this guy. We're gonna go ahead and accept this mission. Uh, so we've got This here, does he want a full two? Alright, so that's interesting. If I remember when I checked the time yesterday, I feel like it said over an hour, like an hour and a half to do these, but this is closer to what I remember. Um, of course, last time I did these missions, it was when. Uh, they first revamped the new character experience, and I tried them out on on uh, some of my older characters. Um, you know, I was like, what kind of that? And I was like, man, those skills really make a big difference in the time, don't they? Well, this is much closer to what I remember. I think... Uh, uh, I think on my main uh, manufacturing character, the time might have been under eight minutes, but... <laughs> um, Alright, so this only has two runs. We're doing two runs, uh, which I believe is what he wants. So we'll go ahead and start that. And... Oh, I guess they want us to use the Thrasher. Um, I think we're actually going to... Let's see. We have significantly more guns. I think we can do it in the Slasher. Um, <clears throat> for the Thrasher... Um, it's got, I want to say, six, well, we could look for sure. Um, can we simulate? Info, simulate. Yeah, so it's, so you can see it's got significantly more gun slots, right? Seven, uh, up here plus one launcher, um, although I typically, um, <clears throat> my typical loadout would be seven guns and a salvage laser, um, <clears throat> and uh, that's just because I love salvage. Um, so in here, let's see, we probably want uh, 
medium shields extender, um, a uh, multi-spectrum multi shield hardener, and then a prop mod, either an afterburner or a micro warp drive, just depending on what we can fit. Um, and then down here, probably, um, I forget the name of the module off and but there's uh the one that that let's see we probably well we see we probably want one that uh there's one that improves tracking and another one that i want to say i want to say there's one that extends op optimal range i think those are probably the ones i would go with in this case um and then rigs, um, depending on how our fit's looking, um, at this point I might not worry about rigs. Um, and just kind of add something later. Uh, we might do something um, <clears throat> to improve damage application. Like there are rigs. There's a rig that uh, that improves tracking. There's a rig that improves optimal range. There's a rig that improves uh, falloff range, I believe. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, depending on how our fit is looking, we might also need to either increase our power grid or our CPU, and either of those can be handled in the rig slot. Um, and which reminds me, another, <clears throat> another totally reasonable use of these low slots um, is a damage control module, which will... Um, increase our tank considerably. It, it increases your uh, resists in all three categories. Um, so yeah, that's always a good um, a good module to look at. So anyway, right now we're sticking with our lowly frigate. Um, but I think that'll be okay. Let's make sure, let's see, uh, we're not damaged, okay, um, do we have insurance? We do, okay, alright, so, enough lollygagging, let's go finish this. I really like this area. All the <laughs> the gamer light space stations. I just I just think those look cool as hell. All right, let's get in there. kind of damage are we taking? Taking explosive, so we'll activate that. Ooh, they are slowing us down. Who is? Okay, that's our main, our main guy. What else is he hitting us with? Warp disruption and warp of fire. All right, let's go ahead and focus on this dude. Otherwise, this is going to be a bad day for us. This might be a bad day for us anyway.
This might have been a bad call to do this in a frigate. Hopefully we can pull through. Doesn't look like... Oh, oh, now we are taking some kinetic. So... Maybe we can speed things up a little bit. Oh, there we go. Alright. Alright, we should be able to take these guys out. We are going to get into hull, of course. Um, oh, come on. gonna have a repair bill but I think we got this <sighs> yeah there we go okay a little bit close um, probably made a tactical error in there uh, going after the trainees uh, before the main guy. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, something to take note of, I suppose. But we did it. Um, yeah, it's going to cost us a little bit to get that repaired. Um, well, maybe not. Maybe it's, uh, well... It will, because we don't have a whole repairer, I don't think. But uh, we can go back to the base. Um, slap an armor repairer on this. And then fix the armor. Um, hull is going to be a little bit more. And uh, once you get into hull damage, some of your modules start taking damage as well. So um, we'll take a look at that when we get back. And uh, hull damage is usually a little bit more expensive. Um, to repair than armor damage. Why are you not? There we go. Um, <clears throat> having this nanofiber internal structure probably didn't help us. Uh, so if we take a look at the description, um, increases ship's velocity, improves maneuverability at the expense of hull strength. Um, so yeah, that might have hurt us a little bit there. Uh, fortunately, <clears throat> Fortunately, we were able to hang active. on. <clears throat> Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right. Look at that. It's glowing. That's how you know you got hull damage. All right. So let's go ahead and turn this in. There we 
good. Hopefully our repair bill is going to be less than that. Um, so, let's see. We'll take this off. And uh, this one's probably going to be faster. No, it's not. Hit that. Okay. So it pops up this warning to say, hey, what are you doing? You got armor and shields on here? Um, and, uh, you know, that this is a ship that's designed to use shields. So why are you putting armor modules on here? That's fine. We know what we're doing. <clears throat> Um, so we can't run the module inside. So we have to go outside. And we're gonna go out of the path here so we're not bumping anybody. Um, we'll go ahead and run that. So there we go. We're up to 23%. Not bad. Um, so yeah, basically, we spend a minute to save ourselves a few thousand isk on our repair bill. Probably worth it at this stage. Um, once you get a little more established, I usually just pay for the repairs. Docking permission requested. <clears throat> Docking request accepted. Especially if you're talking about a bigger ship, like a battleship or something, where it just seems to take longer to get out of the station. So, it takes up more of your time. And, uh, you know, the amount of money compared to what you could be making going out and doing stuff uh, just doesn't seem worth it. Yeah, so here's for the actual hull damage. And then <clears throat> these two modules also took damage uh, when the hull took damage. So we'll go ahead and repair all of those. 5k, not too bad. And let's check. That job's done. Cool. Um, so that means we can complete this mission. What is the next one? Delivery. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Amanika, that's the next one over. We'll go ahead and do that now. Why not? Drive active. drive active. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Right. 
right, so we'll set destination back to them. On dock. Oh, we forgot to clear our cargo hold. <clears throat> Orb drive active. drive active. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. see what he's got up next manufacturing a shuttle so this one let's see oh, four minutes that's pretty fast you know what let's go ahead and do it It's always funny to me when it brings up those messages and it's like, oh, my dude, I'm not going to be putting this in my ship. While we are here, Think. Oh yeah, ha, Noxium. All right. <clears throat> um, EMP generally sells pretty well. Uh, let's go ahead and check market details. Um, yeah. So lowest price is twenty five. Um, I, be I believe. Brutor Tribe Treasury is considered the main trade hub. Um, uh, in Rens, and that's 30.6 ISK each. Um, <clears throat> that's that's a pretty good price. Uh, making, I mean, yeah, you do need the no the Noxium, so it's maybe a little bit more expensive to make, but. <clears throat> the next best price you're going to find is going to be uh, phased plasma. Let's go ahead and check prices on that. So there we're looking at 22, 24, 25. Let's see. Oh, that's, that's market manipulation right there. Um, but 20 to 25 is typically the uh, the range that I expect to see a phase plasma um, <clears throat> selling for. And as I think I've mentioned before, this is what I generally use um, because right, it does thermal, um, which is. Mm -hmm. Okay, against shields. Um, let's see if we look at. Well, so the <clears throat> typical resist profile, right? Shields are weakest against electrical, then thermal, 
right, and relatively strong against kinetic and explosive. Um, armor is basically the reverse, strongest against electrical, um, you know, but still only 35% against, uh, against thermal, and then weakest against electrical. And hull, usually fairly, fairly even, but of the damage types, thermal is the one that's gonna give you the most consistent performance against all the different uh, armor types as a rule. So um, that's the one that I usually go with. And uh, if I remember correctly, there's another one. Oh, not fusion. Anyway, I forget. There's there's another uh, there's another projectile ammo type that does thermal, but face plasma does more. Um, the downside being that you lose range, um, which for a ship like this, eh, that's a little bit unfortunate, but not the end of the world. Um, so let's see if we go back, look at EMP, right? We're doing a fair amount of EMP, not much. Um, which means we're going to punch through shields fairly easy, but we're going to have a hard time with armor. And you probably, you know, if you go back to the fight that we just had, um, you'll see that in uh, how quickly we go through those <coughs> those enemies, uh, the shields versus the armor. Um, range penalty is the same. Uh, so let's see if we go through real quick and look at all of these. Right, so carbonized lead, um, which is real cheap, right? 3.5, not a whole lot of damage. You do get a range bonus though, a tracking speed bonus. Um, depleted uranium, a little more expensive, 14, 15. Um, better damage spread so you know you might have a little bit more consistent application um, tracking speed multiplier which that can be important if you're having trouble hitting stuff um, no range bonus or penalty EMP we already looked at fusion so we're looking at mainly explosive um, also relatively expensive about the same as face plasma um, uh, also a range penalty, let's see, nuclear, um, also mainly explosive but not much damage, relatively cheap, uh, range bonus, tracking speed multiplier, uh, basically the same as carbonized lead, and let's see, proton, electrical, range bonus, tracking speed bonus, Still not a whole lot of damage though, but relatively cheap. And titanium sabo. Moderate price, decent kinetic damage, tracking speed bonus. So those are all your trade-offs, um, right? Oh, you've got your <clears throat> base uh, shield damage and base armor damage here. I'm not sure if these numbers incorporate uh, these are not like I'm not I'm not totally sure how the math is related in these three rows but you know we can go back and look right so fusion <clears throat> looking back here right we've got uh, four and a half and six and a half we've got four and about three we've got two and four and a half five, ten and a half, right? So this is doing significantly more damage, which is why it's more, more expensive. Uh, I've got about five and about six. Um, this is also a relatively popular ammo, ammo type. Um, I used, when I first started playing, I used depleted uranium a lot. Um, that was probably my favorite. Um, when I started out, um, just it's got a 
kind of a jack of all trades. Um, so the carbonized lead, three and four. Um, EMP, again, we're looking at what, six, 16 and a half total. Pretty good, but it's gonna get slowed down by armor. And the phase plasma, we're looking at, all right, you can see it's more consistent across uh, shields and armor and pretty good damage overall, right? We've, it's a total of about 17. So, um, <clears throat> so anyway, those are, those are the trade-offs that you get when you're, when you're picking ammo to use. Um, but if you're picking ammo to sell, EMP uh, is the one that's worth the most. Um, so let's see, are we done here yet? Yes, we are. Complete that. Let's see what he's got up for us next. Right. Okay, so this is a cool mission. Um, we'll be doing this in the venture um, because it's a mining mission. Um, so we're going to go out to an asteroid uh, anomaly, an ore anomaly, uh, that has kernite. Uh, and because kernite's normally a low sec ore, we are going to mine all of it. Um, this slightly more than fits in the venture, even if we uh, put some in the regular cargo hold. So it's going to take two trips, but it is worth it in the long run uh, just to get that ore without the risk of going into low sec. Um, and there's going to be a little bit of fighting. If I remember, there's uh, one or two ships that come to attack us and then we get the uh, production assistant as loot from one of those. But that's going to take some time. So that's going to be for tomorrow. Um, I guess one more thing thing before I forget, right? So, um, one thing you can do to check profitability, right, is if you hover over here, um, it gives us an estimated price. And this is based on the, uh, the sale price of all the materials that go into making the thing if you were to just go buy all. Right, so this is the sale price at our current station. Um, <clears throat> and you can see those prices here. Uh, and, you know, it says, okay, so Noxium, we're paying about 50% more. Uh, Pyrite, we'd be paying about 62% more. And Tritanium would be paying 15% more um, than what's considered market average for the region. Um, so we're looking at a total of 23, uh, about 24,000 for 1,000 rounds. Um, so if we hover over here, see total estimated price. This is based on average sell price, um, right now for 1,000 rounds. It's 32,000. So 24,000 to make it, 32,000. Um, so that puts us in the range of roughly 50% profit. Um, right. Uh, meaning, uh, 50% of our, no, nope, nope, I'm wrong. We're closer to 30%. All right. Yeah, yeah, bad math. Um, yeah, 30% profit over our cost to manufacture. So... <clears throat> pretty good um, like I said it's uh, EMP is usually a pretty safe bet you can pretty much always sell it for somewhere in the range of 25 to 30 sometimes more depending on where you're at um, so one of our long term projects is going to be um, heading out into low sec and getting us some Noxia so that uh we can do all these runs, sell all this ammo, 
or most of it anyway. Um, and uh, make us some money. So, uh, let's see. Jasper, the... Um, I don't spend a lot of time in uh, in Losec, so I'm not totally sure where all of these are. Um, Ochre, I believe, shows up in um, uh, in Asteroid Belts. Jaspit definitely shows up in Anomalies. Um, yeah, so we'll give some of those a try. It'll be a little dangerous. It'll be a little exciting. It'll be fun. All right. So, anyway, that's going to be it for today. So, until next time, have a good one.